<laughs> okay, so um, this is like the third album. And, yeah. Um, the guy wants to know uh, who's he's the editor of Rocking Out Magazine, by the way. Uh huh. And he wants to know if you guys uh, have gone into it with any uh, different attitude than before, any different ambitions. Yes, actually. Uh -huh. um, we well, originally this record was going to be I had thought up as a solo record mm -hmm. because I felt the material. Well, I felt the material was really, really different, and I didn't. And I thought that that dog had a whole image and a whole kind of sound that I didn't even think of disturbing. So when I started writing really different songs, I thought, oh, well, I mean, this is very different. I guess I'll do it on my own. And then, you know, one thing led to another, and I, you know, I told our A&R person, and he said, well, let me hear it. And then when he heard it, he said, you know, I think that dog could do this, and I think they could do it really well. I think you should do it with the band. And I said... You know, I thought about it. We went over songs and picked out what we thought would be good and then, you know, asked the band how they felt about taking that approach. I mean, I'd always written the songs, but I'd never... It was never as much of a departure as it was with this record and these songs. So it just ended up working out. We picked a bunch of songs and we started working on them. And, I mean, I think the cool thing about it is that, you know, instead of me, you know, I would come in with all these different parts and we would arrange it differently, you know, where I'd have a guitar part that Petra would play on the violin or Rachel would play on the bass. Now I got to do my whole thing and then it left more space for them to fill in with their own stuff. So I think that it's actually been a good exchange. Mm -hmm. Even though it now is even more of my my voice, it's still, I mean, it's it's still there. the band members are still there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still a band playing it. Yeah. Um, but you, you say you had originally intended on doing a, a solo album um, you didn't feel compelled to like follow through on that idea though, like thinking, well, look, um, I can understand how the, the you know this would fit into the band mold, okay, but I really right. want to do my own thing. Well, you know, I did, I did go over that with myself a bit, and I felt like it wasn't really the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, the band, we have, you know, we had another record that we could make, and you know, the right you know, to say, oh, I've got all these songs, forget it, and just you know take off and. I just felt like that was screwing everybody over, mm -hmm. and that that's not, you know, it's not fair. It wasn't, it just wasn't the right time, and had it been the right time, I probably would have, and I know that I'll, you know, I'm always going to write songs, and hopefully I'll always be able to put them out, whether I'm in that dog or not, and, but for right now, it seems like this is, you know, this is the best way to do it. It's, you know, it just seems like the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. well, one thing the, uh, the the editor of the magazine was, was speculating about was that, um, you know, it seemed like the other members of the band had all been uh, involved in their extracurricular activities, if you will. Um, uh -huh. There was the rentals and, and Petra's solo album, and I guess Rachel was doing uh, vocal work with Weezer. Um, but, you know, he sort of assumed that you would be uh, branching on your own as well. Uh, did you feel that because everybody had been doing outside stuff that maybe it, it came time to sort of stand up and reassert the identity of the band? Um, no, actually. I mean, when we first, we made our first record about five years ago or four years ago, and um, when we did that, when we finished, I immediately wanted to record more, and I knew I couldn't with the band, and so I, I'd sort of come up with the idea of doing solo stuff in addition to that dog stuff, and I think that I've been thinking that way for a long time, and I think I'll always think that way, because, you know, I am... I'm a songwriter and a singer, and so, I, you know, I've got that whole thing for myself. We had, you know, after our last record came out and we toured for it and we came home, we had a lot of time off, and I spent that entire time writing, and not writing for anything but just to write, not writing for the band, not even really myself, just sitting down and really putting effort into it. And I think during all that downtime, you know, people you know like everybody else worked on other stuff but it wasn't really my way of defining redefining the band it was more of my songs getting out there mm -hmm. so maybe that has to do with, with the next couple of questions here but the guy uh, was saying that uh, you seem to have left behind uh, some of your former uh, he uses the word uh, eccentricity uh -huh. but you know he says it's more um, a confident more assertive this time around mm -hmm. um Definitely. So that has to do with your having grown as a writer and also your yeah. you know, new ambitions as well then? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like 
when we started you know this band and when we we started playing we were you know we've always been a part of i guess what is now called alternative rock mm -hmm. and i think that in the very beginning and this was like even before nirvana really broke i've you know i've felt like there were so many things that could be done differently and i wanted to do them and i felt strongly about it and i think in the past few years i felt like that that all those things i thought were interesting and inspiring they've been done and done and done and done and done and then you know started to be done by bands that you know huge very successful like alternative rock bands but they were a funk band a few years ago because that's what they thought they should be you know it's like i'm sort of feeling like oh my god grunge is like it, it's i when i started to realize like oh my god this is what i'm doing is the same as what anybody else is doing right now i started to worry and i started to think you know it's, it's time i challenge myself again and i think that with that in mind it, i pushed myself into writing in a different way and leaving a lot of that stuff behind and just delving into a whole new area of songwriting than i ever thought i would go into Mm -hmm. So n n now that you sort of changed your own approach, you also uh, have you also changed in terms of what you prefer to listen to as a listener? Yeah, actually. Uh -huh. I mean, that's the uh, that's the other thing about this record. I was listening to a lot of pop music, like you know, even like the Bangles and like uh, the Go Go's, and I started listening to. I started getting more interested in people like Amy Mann and Cheryl Crow and people like that than I was, you know, before interested in other, like, way more rock stuff. And I think that I started trying to, to get more into that and and just tried to channel that part of me a lot more and started listening, you know, I'm mean, still listening to rock, but just with a different influence. Mm-hmm. Well, now that you have sort of this renewed appreciation of, of, of people who uh, uh, perform, you know, more pure pop, what, what do you think is the uh, is the key to uh, writing uh, good songs now? Is it, is it sort of a universality, uh, something that kind of can hit uh, anybody at just about any level? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I knew I'd feel a little bit better. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I mean, I think that... I, I don't know if you... You know, I, what I really like about the song, about songs in general is when you can capture a moment or you can, there's something in there that you can, that just like can inspire you, whether it's like a lyric or just a feeling or, you know, a chord, whatever. I think that that's really all you can ask for. I mean, I'm really into, you know, good melodies and, you know, I'm, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm very into melody and mm -hmm. I've been very inspired by piano as well and I don't I don't know actually a lot of uh, musicians uh, uh, often say that the best stuff uh, is the stuff that comes out immediately yes they don't have to you know uh, struggle with is right that starting to be the case with you or do you still uh, have to kind of mold stuff and carefully uh, work it out well it used to be that I would write whatever came out and leave it just like that and then with this record and all the songs I've been writing, even now when I'm writing, um, I do that, but then I rework it. But if it starts to bother me, mm -hmm. I'll just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, one of the songs on, on our record now, Until the Day I Die, I was, my little sister, my eight-year-old sister, can play piano like a genius. I'm so impressed with her. She wanted to hear something that I had written, and she wanted to learn how to play it. And I'd only written half of that song so far, and so I played it for her, and she learned it. So she kept playing it around the house, and then our dad said, God, that's really good. Did you finish that song? I was like, no, I haven't finished it. And then he kept pushing me to finish it. And it took me about six weeks to write another part to it, to write the chorus. Because I think, like, I, I just, like, I put it away. I was done with it. But then, you know, it's like I had this whole rebirth with it that was really good. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of a combination of both for me, but I don't like to struggle. I'll put it away if I have to. Mm -hmm. The uh, song, I'm Gonna See You, is this just a simple love song? That's actually about touring. Mm -hmm. I wrote that song before we went on tour um, I guess, two summers ago, maybe, mm -hmm. and I wrote each verse is dedicated to a band member and then there's one verse that's dedicated to my boyfriend who I just met then. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, being away from him and being 
trapped <laughs> with these other people. And so the, that's what the song's about. I'll, I'll see you every night. It's about my band. Oh, I see. But it's uh, and about the, the, obviously the, the, the people you care about then. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I care about them, of course. <laughs> I love them. I love them. Uh-huh. I don't always like them, but I love them. But that, I mean, that's what it's about. It's about being on tour and seeing each other every second of every day for six weeks nonstop. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what it is. But lots of people won't think that it's about moving in with somebody. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's not. It's not. Um, is, what, what are some of the common themes that you, 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 you uh, uh, dwell on in your, in your lyrics? I would probably say relationships. Relationships. Mm-hmm. And this guy seems to think that there is a, um, an idea, there's a, like a common thread uh, running through your, your lyrics of uh, you know, fail to com- a failure to communicate. Really? Yeah. Oh. Um, well, I think that I'd probably, I mean, the time when I write is when I'm usually upset. Mm-hmm. So that would probably come through. Because I'm actually a pretty good communicator. But I think that I write songs when I'm alone and I'm sad, mm-hmm. and so that that's probably why that he think why he thinks that. Do you do your songs like? Um, do, do you look for solutions in your songs? Do you, are they uh, meant to uh, to get something out or to, to solve yeah. your part? Yeah, I mean, when I'm usually when I write, I'll write because it's something you know I have to get it out somehow, and that I've chosen songwriting or I've been given that you know that luxury to have it come out through songs and so turning it into a song for a record is generally an afterthought Mm -hmm. but yeah I mean that's that's pretty much I mean I don't I I mean maybe sometimes I'll try and write the answer in the song just to Mm -hmm. remind myself Mm -hmm. when I'm working on it like this is how you have to deal with this situation Mm -hmm. but the main I mean the main goal I think is to just get out what I'm dealing with he um, he likens you to uh, to Rivers Cuomo in some way really are you very familiar with with his stuff yeah I'm familiar with Rivers' stuff but I mean do you think like he pursues the same sort of messages uh, the same sort of themes as you or uh, well I think maybe he he's been inspired to write love songs Mm -hmm. but I don't think he works his emotional stuff out in his songs Uh well I mean maybe he does I don't know I think that I think he's a little bit more removed than I am because I mean I, I you know like my lyrics are diary entries sometimes and and I, I don't know if he's working that way. But you know what? I have to say I don't know because, it, you know, his songs are all different. And some of them are jokes and some of them are really personal. I think their new record is more personal. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I, don't, I don't know him as well as I used to. So I don't know. So I don't know. <laughs> That's what I have to say <laughs> see, after he, all that. He, he said in, in an interview recently that the ideal woman is, is his mother. How about, how about your mother? The, the, his idea of the ideal woman. Oh, that's what he said? Yeah, that's what he said. Ew. <laughs> I don't know his mother. I hope she's a nice lady. What's, what's, what's your idea of the ideal man, I guess is the question. Uh, oh, God. Um, the ideal man would be... Oh, wait. I'm trying to think of uh, a sumo wrestler. Okay, what's his <laughs> yeah. name? What's his name? Um, okay, okay, hold on a second. There's Takanohana and Wakanohana. Mm-hmm, that's right. I would say one of them. <laughs> yeah, why, why is that? The cuter one. The cuter one. No, maybe not the cuter one. Maybe the other brother, because he seems sweeter. Uh-huh. Well, why, why are you familiar with sumo wrestlers? <laughs> My boyfriend is obsessed with sumo wrestlers. Is that right, really? Well, yeah. But, I mean, isn't it kind of hard to, uh, to, to see sumo if you're in the States? No, they show it. There's a channel that that shows all the competitions. Is that right, really? Yeah, that he and his room, his old roommate, used to watch religiously. Really? Yeah, and I never got into sumo wrestling. And then when I first met him, I was like, you know, he made me watch it. I think it was even on our first date. He's like, "Oh, it's 11:30. I got to watch sumo." I was like, <laughs> "What?" And then after a while, I got kind of into it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would have to say one of the one of those brothers. What, 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 why do they represent the, the ideal of I don't know, because I can't think of anything else to say, so I'm giving a shout-out to Japan. Yeah, I see. I see, okay. Um, 
Joe, I want to know why, why you're so caught up with relationships in your songs. <laughs> well, isn't everybody caught up in relationships in their lives? Uh, yeah, but not necessarily in their music. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think that I take... I take what... Whatever I'm thinking about, I, I write about. And I'm generally thinking about relationships and love. That's just how I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've all... I've, always had some kind of love obsession or relationship thing going on in my life and I think that you know I mean a lot of what goes on in my songs is also about me and how I'm dealing with myself in the world and I think that I just you know I'm I don't know I I just am I've always been that way Mm -hmm. I mean our last record was dedicated to my obsession with crushes Mm -hmm. and this one it was not so intentional but I think that that's just how it comes out for me. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, aren't a lot of female artists, uh, don't, don't female artists tend to write more about relationships and songs about romance? I don't know. I mean, have you ever heard of the Beatles? They wrote all songs about relationships. <laughs> a bunch of guys, a bunch of sissy <laughs> guys. No, but I mean, I think that with our first record, I specifically did not write songs about love because mm-hmm. I thought it had been done too much mm-hmm. and then the second record I thought okay I'm obsessed with crushes I should just write an entire record about it and get it out of my system but that didn't work and so then there's this record and they're all about relationships still and there's nothing I can do about it um, but I assume that you know when I have kids I'll probably write a million songs about having children <laughs> or you know if I should become a politician I'll write my political record mm-hmm. <laughs> and Here's a, a vague question again, but okay. uh, you find yourself um, uh, feeling differently about things these days? Do you find yourself changing these days? Yeah. Um, in what way? Well, what you mean in terms of music? Mm, in terms of like your outlook on things, let's say, put it that way. Um, compared to... Compared to maybe a year ago? or Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the weird things for me is that when I started putting out records, I was 19, I used the first batch of songs I'd ever written, and, you know, it's like five years later, almost six years later, and I'm, you know, a different person. I've grown up a lot. I, you know, have different responsibilities in life. I'm not in school anymore. I live on my own. I'm in a serious relationship. I've got, you know, a a job that's, as, as much as it's rewarding, it is equally as difficult, and I think that I've, you know... I just have different needs now. I know that I need to build a future for myself, and I need, you know, I want to be happy. I want to, you know, it's like I have a very different outlook than I did a year ago when I just started entering into this way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, uh, it, it's, yeah, there's mm-hmm. things are, di- are important. Different things are important to me now. What do you think pushed you into that? Why, 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 do, you, why do you start feeling that way? Um, I, I think I just was getting older, mm-hmm. and I also think that, you know, I stopped going to school, and, well, actually, you know, school has nothing to do with it. I think I just started taking writing more seriously, and I fell in love with somebody, and it kind of, you know, made me think, well, yeah, okay, i got to be the person I want to be now. I have to really push myself, because, you know, whether this works out or not, this is my life, and I've got to live it. And I think that that pushed me to write better songs, and to live a better life, and to do a lot of things, to be more independent, and... You know, it's it's been really good for me. How old are you now, Anna? I'm, I'll be 25 in July. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, I sound like I'm 50, huh? <laughs> well, now I'm older. <laughs> here's, here's where you're going to have to help me out. It says that you were, your family is a very musical family. Yeah. What, what, what does that refer to? My brother is a drummer. He's in the Beck Band. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, um... My father was a record producer for years, and now um, work and has worked at, rec- at a record label, and now works at another one. What's what's his name? Lenny Warrenker. He, oh he, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he runs DreamWorks Records. Mm-hmm. And um, I've, you know, I mean, I don't think they have anything to do with what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I really don't. I mean, I grew up around music. I love music. I have a critical mind for music, but I never thought I would do this. And I think it was surprising to both of them as well to when I started doing it. Mm-hmm. And um, the girls in the band, Rachel and Petra, their father is is a very well-known and respected 
jazz bass player Charlie Hayden, and their brother is Josh Hayden, who's in the band Spain, and their sister is a musician, and, you know, they've grown up in a musical family as well. Mm -hmm. But I think they always wanted to be musicians, and they knew that they would always do this. Mm -hmm. And how about your own kids growing up in that kind of musical family? You talked about the, the, the good side, being surrounded by music. Was there a bad side as well? Um, no, I don't think so. No, I, I, I think it, it was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, you know, when we were kids, we were exposed to a lot of really cool and different music through my father, and I think because he was so involved in music, he's, and he's such a, he's such a smart man, he's a really good business person, and has a really good ear, and, and knows how to respect artists. I think it's just, it exposed us to a great way of thinking, and he always urged us to do what we love. And I think that's because he was among so many artists and was such a good per a business person that he's, you know, was very encouraging and not judgmental. Where I think a lot of people, their parents might think, "Oh, you want to be a musician? You'll never make any money. You, you know, it's going to be so difficult. You're nothing." In my family, it was just as accepted as if we wanted to go to law, law school or, or become doctors or something. Or, mm -hmm. you know, even I worked in a, a clothing store for two years, and he he was just as supportive of that as he is of this. Mm -hmm. So I think he's, you know, it's it's it was good because it, it gave us open minds. It also let us know that what we want to do, we we can try to do, and it's it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And it also made us realistic. Too, I think, which is good. Has he been coaching you from the sidelines? Because I'm sure he's seen a lot of uh, you know young musicians come and go and, and make mistakes yeah. and stuff. And um, no, actually, we've kept it pretty separate. I mean, especially in the beginning, we kept it very separate. If anything, he's helped me. He's given me um, background about other artists, but you know, he he's just a very good support system. I feel very fortunate that. You know, it'd be like, you know, if we worked in a different line of work, and, but in the same place, you know, he would have a lot more information and could be helpful that way. But, I mean, he, he's not really hands-on in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, you know, I play him songs, but it's pretty rare. I mean, it's a, it's a good relationship. It's like if I had a, you know, it's just like having a good friend. But not he's not as instrumental, I think, as people would assume. Mm hmm because I know we've run into a lot of criticism actually about our parents and their involvement in the music industry and ours and I think that they've actually had very little to do with it except just being very supportive and I think we've been lucky. Well, you mean people have thought that your connections got you where you are now? Yeah, we get a lot. I mean, we used to get that a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't really anymore but I mean, it, it's bizarre because they're probably you know i talk to my dad about it more now than i did then and now it's as an artist it's not as you know i you know i get a record deal or whatever you know it's like it's very it's different than than people have assumed mm -hmm. you, you talked about having your, uh, your, your brothers in beck's band and you, uh -huh. you have an eight-year-old sister as well i have three sisters i have an 18 year old sister an eight-year-old sister and a new you know month old sister <laughs> right. and, and my brother. Wow. Yeah, we got a big family. Uh -huh. I mean, and they're all musical. Uh -huh. I don't know about the baby, but everybody else is. <laughs> she's, dro she's drooling in rhythm right now. She will be. <laughs> she's probably just going to have to be. <laughs> She'll break the chain. So what, what, what is the age span then among the siblings? What's the what? The, the age span. Um, My brother, I think, is tw tw almost 28. Mm-hmm. The 28, 28 year age. Yeah. 28, 24, 18, mm -hmm. 9, and, you know, 0. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of time. That's amazing. That's I amazing. know. Uh -huh. um, now, your your brother plays in, in, in Beck's band, and I guess you're, you're, you're a very good friend of Beck, it says here? Um, we used to be better friends. We haven't really kept in contact since we both started touring. We were more friends before... Um, our records came out when we played a lot in Los Angeles, and ever since we both started touring years ago, we kind of lost track with each other and don't really keep in touch. Mm, but me musically, you know, people seem to think he's, you know, adding a new dimension to uh, to, 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 to to pop uh, culture. Um, yeah. Do you think you're part of the same 
or the, 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 the not the, not the same thing that he's doing. I think our music's really really different. Mm-hmm. I think you know he's written folk songs before that I can relate to, but I don't really relate to the other stuff he's doing. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think that I have a place in in or can have a place in shaping part of pop culture based on what I do mm-hmm. and what my band does, but I don't think it really has much to do with him. Mm-hmm. You think you get like if you bring something new to the table, how would you characterize it? Oh uh, God, I don't know. Is it, is it just just a matter of like making the music that that, that, that comes into your head? Or do you yeah. Think more. Just yeah, I mean, I music? think that if what I do is original, then you know, then it has its own place for how for what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's original. Mm-hmm. Although love songs aren't so original, so maybe I'll just have a little place in love song category that's mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do, do you have heroes or role models uh, among musicians? Um. I mean, there's people that have influenced me, mm-hmm. but I don't really, ha- I, I don't really have a person that I wish I had their same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Like, who, who are your main influences? Um, it's it's kind of different with every period, but um, I've always been a fan of Kim Deal, and mm-hmm. I've always been a fan of. Uh, like you know, I love Carly Simon, mm-hmm. which is so bizarre. I think it's just a, a, a guilty pleasure. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I listen to a lot of Bangles and Go Go's mm-hmm. in the past, you know, year or so. Mm-hmm. Getting getting into Susanna Hoff's voice, mm-hmm. and um, I don't. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of heroes. I'd like to kind of do my own thing. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think that's where I'm kind of geared, which I think is good because, you know, it's. I really feel like it's time for this band to develop and for me to develop and for us to have our own place and do our own thing and stand on its own. Mm-hmm. And I think that we're in the right direction. Now that you obviously are, you know, involved in, in creating music, do you find that you kind of shut yourself off from what's what's happening now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel a little out of touch, but it's probably better. Mm-hmm. Cause, I mean, you know, when you mentioned the Go Wilson Bangles, I mean, that was the stuff that was popular when you were probably, what, in elementary school? Yes. Mm-hmm. Were, were you listening to it then as well? Yeah, I did listen to the Go Go's when I was in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. And um, the Bangles, it's, it's new. I never really liked the Bangles. I didn't like Susanna Hoff's voice. Uh-huh. And then recently I got into it and I uh-huh. started getting really into her voice. Mm-hmm. And um, the Go Go's, I think. I mean, there's, there's, that's more of a childhood influence, although I've been, I'm friends with one of the women who is in that band, and I've written with her a little bit, and I think that she's had a, a hand in, in my developing. Who's, who's that? Charlotte Caffey. Mm-hmm. We actually wrote a song for a, a TV show. We wrote the theme song. <laughs> what, what, what show is that? Clueless. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, it's very silly, but it was really fun. Mm-hmm. And... So I, I I think I don't know yeah. I don't have any huge role models though. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, now that you're in the position you're in, do you find yourself like obsessed with work and business all the time, or no? You know, I mean, no, I I was obsessed with writing for a long time, and then we made the record, and I've been writing a lot since. I'm actually I've been working on a side project with Charlotte and. Her her husband and my boyfriend and their brothers, and so we've all been working on a band together, which is a total side thing, but it's really really fun. Um, but I've I'm just starting to get into work again. Our record isn't even out yet, and I think that we've done a little bit of touring, but I got I mean I'm gonna have to get more into it. I've been loving my life at home right for the past year of just sitting around and writing and cooking, <laughs> hanging out with my boyfriend. Having, having a side band sounds very very much like Kim Deal because I mean that's how uh, the that's how she uh, oh, developed the right. Well, maybe the Malibu kids will become the the new breeders. I don't know. <laughs> I now, love the Malibu. It's really fun. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So what, what do you do with yourself these days other than, 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 than cook and, and stay at home? How do you uh, do you enjoy yourself? Well, lately I've been working. I've you know we've been rehearsing a lot and. Um, playing a lot of shows, and we just went on a tour. And then my boyfriend's also in a band, and so I, you know, we've been visiting each other. So I haven't actually had a lot of 
free time, not to mention that, you know, we've been doing lots of, you know, press and photo shoots and, uh, you know, video. And so I've actually been busy for the past couple months. Mm -hmm. The cooking and writing was a while ago. Do you thrive on work or do you find yourself burning out? I don't really burn out. I think I'll get stressed out, but I like to work, and, I, and you know, obviously, I really like to write. So I don't, I don't burn out. I'm into it. I mean, I think I'm less motivated because I don't like to travel, which is kind of a drag because my job is either, tra you know, it's half of it is traveling. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I, I'm into it. I'm ready for the challenge right now. Mm -hmm. have, have you ever considered work outside of music? Um, yeah, I just don't know what I would do. Uh -huh. Um, I mean, yeah, because it's so difficult. You know, there's like 20 people who really get to be successful and the rest are, you know, don't. <laughs> and it's it's difficult financially because you, it's hard to make a lot of money. It's hard to live well and, you know, or even live a lot of the time as a musician. So, I've you know, in dark moments I felt like God what else could I do my boyfriend and I decided we would run a travel agency mm -hmm. if um, if this didn't work out does he still have a day, a day job no no he's actually never had a day job he's he's been in a working band for years really so but he, he, does he play clubs in the area or um, like what, what, what he's a touring band he's in a band called Red Cross oh Red Cross okay. uh huh oh and what, who, who is he? What, what does he play for? He's the bass player, songwriter. Oh, okay, I see. Steven. Uh-huh. But so they, I mean, they've been, you know, he's been working, he's been working in this band for like, you know, 20 years. Yeah, that's right. They've been around forever. Yeah, they've probably, knowing them has probably, it's helped in, in my, I think it's, you know, helped me work-wise with a better work ethic and, mm -hmm. and also, you know, writing better pop songs, I think. Mm, so I think you're you're a big fan of them as well. You know, before we start going out, I'd never really heard them. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not objective. I'm a fan after the fact, but I do have to say I really do enjoy listening to their records. It puts me in a different mood than it does listening to almost anything else. And I, I think, and I'm kind of mad because if we break up, it's going to be ruined for me. <laughs> but I really, I mean, I I really enjoy their music. All you know, all the you know, 20,000 different phases of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I mean, it's kind of a, a, a joy-oriented uh, band. So when you say it puts you in a different mood, does it, does it puts you in a very positive... Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. It's it's good. I mean, at our, we've done a couple of photo shoots, and I'm usually super camera shy. I have, like, you know, I get really depressed. And the last one we did, we you know, everyone knew, like, okay, we got to make Anna, we got to keep her happy. So they kept playing their new record over and over again. I was in the best mood and had a great time <laughs> and it's like that's how i feel when i listen to it it's like god this is so fun i love it so it's it's a, it's a good thing so, so what does retreat from the sun mean it's act it actually means depression like staying inside and and it's not really depression but just like staying inside and not going out into the world and why would you choose that for the album title um I think that that song came out really well, and it's probably among, you know, it's probably one of our, it's definitely the entire band's favorite song. You know, we all have our specific ones that we love, but we all love that one together, and I think we just like the title, and it just sounded like a good record title, and I think it speaks a lot for this record being kind of dark, but then kind of light at the same time. Like, you don't really understand what the title means, and I just, I don't know. I, I just, I think it's a, it's a good reflection. Mm-hmm. I guess it, it's, it sort of projects a mood. It sounds like a Beach Boys title. <laughs> uh-huh. We thought <laughs> that'll work. It sounds like a Beach Boys. Just throw it on there. So, so other than uh, sumo wrestling, do you know anything about Japan? No, not much. I'm, I've never been there. I'm very eager to go. Mm-hmm. That dog is very excited about Japan. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know much. I mean, Steve, the, the boyfriend, who I'm bringing up way too much in this interview, um, is, a, is totally obsessed with Japan. And so I know some, a little from him, but I, I don't really know much. But I am very excited to go there and check out the fashion. Mm -hmm. I'm, 
I, I seem to vaguely recall Red Cross having come here last year, didn't they? Yeah, I think they did. Uh-huh. I think they've been there once or twice. Really? Uh-huh. And he told you about his, his visit here? Or? Yeah, he says it's great. Uh-huh. Yeah, it sounds excellent. You know, the mm-hmm. tours aren't very long, but they're really efficient. Mm-hmm. And the people, he said, were all just really great and mm-hmm. respectful. And, you know, you get these great meals and, you know, your shows are really great and they're early. It just sounds like an excellent experience. I'm very into it. Yeah, why, why is he so into, into Japan? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I think he just got into it. Uh-huh. He's got, he got the bug. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, and well, I think I've gone through the entire list of questions here. Okay, um, good. And I thank you very much for your, your time. And all, you have anything else you want to uh, say here before I let you go? Um, no. You basically said it all. <laughs> I think I said it all. Yeah, I mean, what would the, is there any chance you guys getting out here? I mean, uh, We're trying. Uh-huh. I think, I mean, we're planning on it. So hopefully we'll be there in the next few months. I know our record's being released, so mm-hmm. we'd love to come out there and support it there. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we'll get out there. All right. It'd be great. All right. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. uh, And we'll talk to you later. Okay, great. Okay. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.